going on guys? Brian here. For today's video, I'll be showing you guys how to use a segmented control with your UI table view. So let's get started. Now I already opened up a blank Xcode project. You can do so right now. Just pause the video. The first thing I'm going to do is drag over a table view. I'm put it right about there. Doesn't have to be exact, doesn't really matter where it positioned it just has to be low right there. So let's add the constraints. Next thing I'm going to add is a segment to control. Right about there. Stretches out. Alright, let me add a constraint for this. And the third thing we're going to add is a cell for the table view. Over. Let's add a user identifier, which is called a cell. The style will be basic, so we have the title right here. Alright, so. Let's say, for, uh, for the purpose of this video, the first segment is going to change the data of the table so that it only shows uh, car brands. And then the second segment is only going to show uh, names or fruits. Okay? So let's connect these to the... Let's create outlets for them. Okay? So first will be segment control. Then table view. One more thing, don't forget, we have to declare a function for this, or an action, really. An action, let's just call this a segmented change. Yeah. Now let's go back to the controller. All right, so let's specify the two arrays that will hold the data for our table view. So the first array is cars. Let's declare that right now. So BMW, Range Rover, uh, Lamborghini, and Tesla. And the next one, fruits. Let's pair apple, uh, dragon fruit, and melon. All right. Now let's add the, the required table view functions. So UI table view delegate, UI table view data source. And here we the load, let's say table view that delegate equals to self and the data stores itself as well. Let's so add the necessary function, so number of rows here. Now typically in your app you may you, you probably just return whatever amount you want or whatever amount is required in your app. For the purposes of this video, we are going to want to uh, return a certain amount of rows according to what current index of the segment control is at. So what I like to do is, I like to use a switch statement. You can use a different method, but I prefer a switch statement because it's easier to use. So we say switch, segment control, that's selected uh, segment index. The first case would be zero. Now here, you don't want to say we just say return cars, not count. And then let's add another case, case one, and return fruits, count. Default, which is break, and then let's return zero by default. Okay. Now what this is, right? Um, for the first case, zero, right? So that's gonna be the first segment. Okay. And case one will be the second segment. So it's always starts off from zero. Like an array, it will start off from zero. Okay. And then the next function we're gonna need is cell for row. Here, let's say let's cell equals to t with you that dq sub identifier. So that we declared before, the next path. And then we're, we're going to use the switch statement again. So say switch, a segment to control, that's selected, segment index, first case is zero again as well. And here we're going to want to assign the information to our cell according to what segment it's at. So for the first case, zero, say so cell that text label that text will equal to cars and index path dot row. We're going to add another case. For the next for the second segment, so say all that text label that text equals to fruits and next path that row. Perfect. And the break default will just be break and then let's return this cell. Okay. Same thing for the switch statement. Alright, segment of control is going to check what selected uh, segment is that or what index is that. So if it's the first segment, it's going to it's going to assign the cell's text label to the cars. If it's the second segment, it's going to assign the 
a text label to fruits. Okay. And then return that cell back to the caller or back to the table view, really. And then here in the segments of the change function or action, we're going to say table view uh, reload that. Now if we give this a run, you should see that it's working perfectly. So let's do that now. Alright, so it finally loaded up. Bring it to the simulator here. You can see for the first segment, it's showing a list of our cars, which we specified here in the cars array. Now, if we click over on the second segment, it should change the table view, uh, the table view's data to show a list of fruits like we specified this array right here. So let's do that now. And it changed, see? So if I click the first one, we'll say a list of cars, and the second one, list of fruits. And the reason why it changes like that is because we have a function right here and we're just reloading the table view um, according to what segment you press. That's the end of this tutorial. I hope you guys liked the video. Like and subscribe and stay tuned for more.